Hello, this is Bruce at Clep's Garage. Welcome back to another episode. Today you're seeing a 1920 Ford Model T coming around the corner. See what it takes to get this thing in running condition. We, this is a barn find. We went up to Toledo, Ohio of all places to find this. And it was actually quite an ordeal to get it to this condition you're seeing now. So come along, let's see what's going on with this. So here we are in Toledo of all places, a little tiny shed attached to a garage. Uh, we actually come up to look at something else, but we're going to end up buying this. So here it is in its barn fine condition. So let's take a look over here at what we actually come up here to look at. Uh, I actually found out about a car that uh, was uh, listed in on uh, I think Craigslist or somewhere anyhow. It, it spiked my interest, so I went up there to look at it and uh, just couldn't get together with the guy on the price. He was way higher than what I thought it was worth. But anyhow, under this cover, of all things, we're going to look at a 19 and 32 Auburn. Oh, yeah. Holy Toledo, it's an Auburn. Anyhow, it's a four-door sedan, uh, old, old restoration. Still had original mohair interior. I wonder how many mohs had to die to make mohair interior. You'll have to look that up. It's not really an animal. But anyhow, uh, decent car. It's all there. Uh, wasn't in running condition, so I had no idea the, the condition of the motor. And looked at it over and just, I don't know. Looked at that car and the car beside it. It's a Hudson four-door sedan. So anyhow, we got prices of all three cars. The Model T was the most reasonable so we thought, well, I came here all the way to Toledo. I'm going to buy something. So I ended up buying the uh, the T. And, of course, it wasn't running neither. So kind of made a deal with them. But I probably paid too much for the T. But that's another story. So anyhow, here's the Hudson. That's, a, that's actually a nice piece. It's a four-door sedan, uh, six-cylinder. Both cars were uh, six-cylinders, if I remember right. And um, neither one of them were in running condition. I don't know what it would take to get these in running condition. Hudson had some quirky things. They had a um, cork disc clutch, and it ran in oil, among other things. Those had a habit of sticking when they sat around. I have a 1912 Hudson, and that thing sticks at the drop of a hat. So I really didn't want to get too invested in that, because I know what it's going to take to uh, get it running. So uh, in this scene here, we're uh, actually getting the, uh, the uh, Model T out of its hiding place, and Hey, Sandy in Texas, guess what? I finally got an electric winch, and we're actually using it. Good thing it had a 50 or 60-foot cable because we needed it. It's on the front of our 24-foot trailer. This is all the farther we could back into the guy's driveway and uh, couldn't really push it out of there because there wasn't any room for us to get in front of the car, believe it or not. It was just, it was packed. So anyhow, I uh, winched it out of here, and then if it wasn't tight enough, I mean, we had like a half an inch, if that, on either side. It wasn't tight enough to back there's a set of steps that we had to uh, try to miss. So Nash is piloting the T right now, and he's trying to uh, miss the steps as Ted's yelling at him which way to turn, but he really couldn't turn very much because of the, the tightness of the front fenders against the door. Somehow it managed to roll out of there without hitting the, uh, the step. However, the front wheels was going to uh, hit. So we got a floor jack, jacked it up, moved it over, and then uh, come along and, and pulled it back into the trailer. So kind of a tedious job, but you just never know what you're going to run into um, when you're when you're getting something out of a garage find, especially if it doesn't run and it's been sitting for years. We did have to air up a couple of the tires uh, before we moved it, which was really fun to do because we had to carry the air tank up and over the car to get to the wheels. And then if that wasn't bad enough, a friend of mine came with me and bought an Old Town canoe. You can't really see it, but the Old Town canoe is inside the trailer, and we have to miss right, that. So Washed it off, cleaned up a little bit. We put a little gas in it. Didn't want to get to the carburetor, so we had to do a little cleaning. And uh, I addressed the points. I did remember the zip code to Cleveland, 44101, I think. Anyhow, we'll, uh, we'll turn it over and see if it'll start. So right now I'm hand choking it. I don't hear anything. Usually you can hear a vacuum. Okay. Well, we might have to touch. 
tell this one. So uh, right here I've adjusted the uh, timing, it's really only run on one or two cylinders. It sounds like one, sounds like the, the 19 brush. Having a little issues here, uh, let's see what we can come up with, but it's definitely not running good. Right now I'm spraying a little uh, spray oil like WD or something like that around the intake and exhaust manifold intake to see if it's sucking air. I'll tease them for you for doing that. My laser bad for doing that. But they won't run right if that's what's going on. Wasn't the case here. Uh, you'll see here in a minute. It's just a, it's a motor issue. Okay, so we're trying to get T started. It's only hitting on about, I don't know, three cylinders. Pop the back valve cover off. There's a the front one, there's the back one. Uh, number three, both valves are stuck open. I'm gonna have him hit the starter. Go ahead and hit the starter. So as you can see, nothing's happening. And the, uh, the lifters are hanging up. They just pop right back down. So I'm gonna spray some oil up in there and see if I can uh, Get in there with a screwdriver and lift up on them. Try to get them broke loose. And we'll try that. So I'm going to use a pair of backwards pliers. And we're going to stick that in there. See if we can get this to pop up. Seems to be pretty stuck. I thought maybe this would go easy. Doesn't seem to be. Alright, so I'll give you another tool. Okay, so we got a couple of stuck valves. We're trying a, a little trick here. I got them to move up a little bit, but they won't come back down. Uh, without taking the head off, I'm trying to do something. Basically, using a heat gun, I drained the, the water out of it so the, so the block will heat up. And uh, we're using our heat gun. So like right now, the one beside we're at 106, and this one's 164. So we're gonna try to bring that temperature up around 200. We're gonna let them sit. Put some more uh, WD and some penetrating oil on there. Let it sit overnight and see if they, uh, they break loose. Okay, so uh, got the two valves that were stuck moving. However, they're not moving smooth enough. Going to have to take the head off and uh, pull them out and uh, 
you know, scuff them up a little bit, oil them, get them working. So, uh, got all the head bolts off, got everything out of the way, drain the antifreeze. A uh, little uh, cute little gadget. I got here a couple of uh, water pipes with caps on them. Learned this at my uh, Model T meeting. We're going to screw these into the to the head here where the spark plug holes go. And we can use that to get this head off. So if this works right, there you go. Let's do this number. Usually these back two bolts you have to leave in because it hits the firewall. So that's what we did on this. This makes it real easy to put it on and take it off. Alright, now I've got the head off. I'm going to crank this thing over. And uh, number three valves are the ones that were stuck. I got them to move. So what's going to happen is they're going to pop up. And they probably aren't going to come back down. Yeah. So. We got all the rest of them are moving the way they should be moving. Except for these here. So this one here I've got moving up and down pretty decent. This one here not so much. So what I'm going to do. Is. Uh, I'm going to pull this one out. And. Uh, get that cleaned up. So that'll be my project for uh, tomorrow. I've done enough work tonight. All right, so you see me take the head off. Uh, that was last night, this is another night. Uh, went ahead and I got these valves, the two valves that were stuck, I got them out of there and got them working smooth and I'm lapping them in. So to lap a valve in, basically uh, you take um, stuff and put around that edge and you take this little handy dandy suction cup tool and put it on there and you grab it like this and you do one of these numbers, and you can hear it. Well, it's, I've already got most of it done. Anyhow, it goes from noisy to quiet. And when it gets down to quiet, it's probably seated in there. And you take some, uh, make sure you take some cleaning fluid and clean all that graphite out of there. And then that valve will be seated. So, uh, I'm gonna call that a done job. I'm gonna order a new set of valve springs for this thing, cause uh, I took these two out and I don't know, they just don't look straight. <laughs> so for a Model T, I can get eight new valve springs for $5.50. And uh, I think that's well worth $5 to put new springs in. But we'll put new springs in this and uh, button this back up and it should run pretty good. Got my new parts today that I ordered. Got uh, some new springs and the, uh, the new uh, keepers that go on there. So basically this will go up through the valve. This is like a retainer and then there's a little tiny pin. I got a whole bag up in case I lose them. <laughs> Anyhow, you shove this up and uh, put that pin through there and you're done. So today I'll be using my little special tool that I have for doing just this job and uh, we'll get this hooked up show you how that works. But we're ready to put it back together and uh, See if this is going to work. We're going to try this. Um, see if we can get this together. It's going to be fun. Camera's mounted on a tripod, and uh, it's going to be kind of fun to try to do this and show you at the same time. So what I'm going to do first is pull this valve out. I have this manifold up here out of the way. I'm going to lay it there, and we're going to try to put the uh, the spring in there first. Should be able to do this by hand. I'm actually going to go ahead and try to put the keeper on there. Probably should do that with this. Okay, so that's in there. Like thus. Now we're going to put the valve back in there. Like that. Now it's time for our fancy dancy tool. I'm gonna slip that in there like that. Just down like that. And I'm gonna adjust it. Okay, like that. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a little hole there. At this point, we're going to stick the pin in the hole and then we'll have that valve spring done. So now if I can get the pin out without losing it. Oh, 
I'm going to use a pair of needle nose pliers to stick that in there like that. Now we'll let this back down like this. Make sure it's on there. And uh, just for good measure, we'll, uh, we'll crank it over and make sure it works. Up, back down. About like that. All right, one done. Seven more to go. We won't bore you with the rest of it, but that's how you put a valve spring back together. Just thought I'd show you one more thing. Um, hopefully you can see it here. So on a Model T block, they have a, uh, a hole in the bottom of the valve area to let any oil back down and return. It's an oil return. It's probably a good idea to put some sort of a bolt or something in there uh, while you're changing these valves so nothing falls down in there. Uh, so that's why that's there. And uh, once we get this done, we'll pull this out of there, put the valve cover back on it. That'll be a done deal. But that's a little, little uh, safety tip for you. So I got the manifolds back on. I did that first. I put the head on. So I've got these pipes here to show you that's how I put that on. They're like handhelds. So now I'm going to go around with the speed wrench and uh, just snug them down and then we'll get the torque wrench out and torque them. But right now we're just going to just snug them up. Always want to start to center and work your way out. I'm sure there's probably a uh, guide that shows you the correct order on a Model T. However, I think I can figure this out. Not that difficult. And about like that. We'll get this thing the rest of the way together and we'll try to start it, see if it runs any better than it did the last time. Hit better. Back together, I got all the stuff that was on there that came off of it. Don't have any parts left over. So we're gonna try to start it and hopefully It'll run a lot better than it did the last time you heard it run. And yes, I shut the door because cars start better when you shut the door. adjust that. Well, we'll do a 360 of this one.
Hey, that's going to do it for this episode of Clips Garage. Remember to like and subscribe and drive them if you got them. Here's a real gem here.